Luna Park, Sydney, an iconic park in an iconic location. Since we last reviewed Luna Park, Sydney back in 2018, they've debuted not one, not two, but nine brand new attractions, with eight of them opening up on the same day late last year. With the park approaching its 90th birthday in just a few years' time, it was overdue for an overhaul. And these new additions included plenty of rides the whole family can enjoy together. What hasn't changed though is that Luna Park is located in one of the most picturesque spots in the world, right on Sydney Harbour. So how is this 1930s style boardwalk park now that it's updated itself with some brand new modern attractions? Let's find out. For review time, I'm Luke, and this is our 2022 review of Luna Park, Sydney. Family Rides, six out of 10. Of the nine brand new rides welcomed last year, seven of them are family-friendly offerings able to be ridden by the whole family. The Luna Land expansion introduced several classic rides you wouldn't be surprised to see at amusement parks around the world including a children's ferris wheel called the bug, a balloon ride called cloud nine, and the true standout that's fun for big kids like myself too, loopy lighthouse, a mini drop tower. A bonus is that a lot of the family rides are also smaller versions of the big thrill rides. So while your child may not be tall enough to ride hair razor or the big dipper, they probably will be tall enough to ride loopy lighthouse and little nipper. Speaking of the little nipper, Two of the new family attractions are roller coasters, giving this small park a total of four coasters, which all build incredibly nicely off each other. From the perfect first children's coaster with the little nipper, to the surprisingly fun boomerang, and then up to the classic wild mouse. This coaster is an icon, and for good reason. It is one of the only still operating wooden wild mouse coasters in the world located in one of the most beautiful locations in the world. Though it can be hard to admire the sights of Sydney Harbour as zipping around the corners, it feels like you're about to get whipped right into it. Several family favorites survived the huge overhaul, including the Ferris wheel, the Tango train, which offers both a mild and wild setting, as well as one of my favorites, Valare, the park's chair swing. One of the best things about Luna Park when it comes to family rides is that adults can ride every single attraction, giving you the chance to enjoy the rides with your family rather than just watching your children enjoy them, as was the case with a lot of attractions before the overhaul. Thrill Rides, five out of 10. While Luna Park Sydney is mostly family focused, it does have some more hair raising attractions for thrill seekers. Easily the new standout attraction is the third generation Big Dipper, a truly incredible ride for a park of this size. Being the first ever Interman Hot Racer and the first launched single rail coaster in the world. But with new technology does come new quirks and the Big Dipper is no exception. The attraction gets progressively rougher the further you sit towards the back of a train, but the front seat rides incredibly smoothly and is highly recommended as my seat of choice. While the first launch exists merely to get you to the second, that second launch at 70 kilometers an hour, right into a non-inverting loop that tries to whip you out of your seat and into the harbor is a highlight of the experience. The attraction may only be about 40 seconds long, but the sheer amount of fun packed into that 40 seconds makes this a must-do experience for seasoned and starting thrill seekers alike. While the Big Dipper may be carrying more than its fair share of weight when it comes to thrill rides, the other new addition for thrill seekers is a sledgehammer, a gyro swing that is almost a direct replacement for the Ranger that previously sat in its place. Usually, I love this type of ride, with the claw of Dreamworld being one of our favorites here at review time, but the slow loading times and painful harnesses on sledgehammer left plenty to be desired especially with the ride currently only offering a 240 degree ride cycle, even though the attraction can and previously was offering a full 360 degree option. Elsewhere, the park also has the Rotor, a custom built attraction where you stick to the wall as the floors come out beneath you, which is an absolute classic and icon that 
I've refused for my entire life. And the Hair Razor, a 50 meter tall drop tower that will give you one of the greatest views from a ride anywhere in the world. Just make sure you take a second to appreciate it before you plummet back down to earth. Experiences, five out of 10. While a lot has changed in terms of rides, some things are almost exactly as you remember them. And thankfully, that's the case with the park's 1930s style funhouse, Coney Island. An offering so unique, it single-handedly gets the entire park its experience score. When it's all up and working, Coney Island is perhaps one of the most unique theme park experiences, not just in Australia, but in the world, allowing you to step back in time to see what the early days of amusement parks were like. Unfortunately, a lot of the arcade machines within and effects in the funhouse style sections are out of order, which does detract from the overall success of the offering. The Devil's Drop Slide continues to be one of the most exhilarating yet terrifying attractions in any amusement park. Just be prepared to brave a fairly sizable line. There are some offerings within Coney Island that I genuinely wonder how they pass modern health and safety codes, but I'm not gonna think about it for too long because they're a heck of a lot of fun. Entertainment, two out of 10. While Luna Park Sydney does offer some entertainment, it's not something to seek out, more just something to stumble upon and enjoy for a few minutes as you're walking around. Singing and dancing performances do take place on a central stage outside of Coney Island, but there is nowhere to sit and watch in the shade. So if you wanna see the shows, be prepared to stand in the often blisteringly hot Australian sun. One thing they should be commended on for is the roving characters who bring the midway to life with their banter and welcoming of any guests who are passing by. Operations, six out of 10. While the individual attraction operators were on the ball all day when it came to running the rides, some choices made from above the frontline staff leave a lot to be desired. Attractions like Sledgehammer seem to be a nightmare operationally, only running one of its two intended cycles. But not only that, the attraction is often run by a single operator. And due to the ride not having automatic seatbelts, it can take upwards of 15 minutes to run a single cycle of the attraction. A lot of this comes down to decisions from management on the types of rides and staff scheduling selected, with the day staff doing their absolute best to load guests as fast as physically possible. In general within the park, ride times are short and load times are high. So while queues may not seem all that crazy, you might end up waiting longer than expected. The other attraction that seemingly proved to be an operational issue to work with is, unfortunately, Big Dipper, which is an intimate prototype coaster model which says it all. The ride goes down a lot, sometimes for a few hours and sometimes for weeks. I've seen multiple trains of people being evacuated from the brake run of this coaster. Thankfully, the teams have been trained well and all guests have always been safely evacuated in a short amount of time. Theming, three out of 10. The park isn't trying to be fully immersive and instead represents a throwback to the golden era of boardwalk amusement parks. And the sections that embrace this look the best. The new Lunar Land section out the back though, seems to have been purely designed around fitting as many attractions in one space as physically possible, which is great for riders, but not great for those who love immersive theming. Some facades on the main midway have been updated to a new 3D style that looks great, but they stand next to sections that are flat painted walls and have been that way for years, even though it originally looked like they were slowly updating all of the facades over time. This juxtaposition of old versus new is perfectly seen in the Big Dipper Station which had tried to emulate the look of the classic facade, but falls short, featuring flat walls instead of fully realized buildings. The problem is even more evident in the queue for the Big Dipper itself, which starts amazingly with a historic ride vehicle from the original Big Dipper and hand-painted murals, before evolving into a maze of metal fencing that 
almost makes you feel like you're in prison. It wasn't uncommon to hear someone in our group shout out dead man walking as we wandered through the metal tunnel. Thankfully, the park is neat and tidy, and once again, we need to give special props to the painting department, whose hand-painted works of art truly make certain sections of the park pop. Merchandise, eight out of 10. While they don't have a huge selection of merchandise, most of what is on offer is incredibly unique and a great fit. The single gift shop within is packed full of items to purchase that are almost all exclusive to the park without generic filler, except for some of the expected Aussie souvenirs like a kangaroo and such, but those are just everywhere you go in Sydney. You've got items featuring the iconic Luna Park face, the logo, or even some specific attraction merchandise for the bigger rides like Big Dipper, Boomerang, and the Wild Mouse. They also had an upcycled denim jacket complete with patches and pins from the park already included. Of course, if you want to decorate your own jacket, you can also choose from the wide variety of pins and patches on offer. A few items within the store did have quality issues, especially for the price, but overall the merchandise is pretty great, and several items have been purchased and currently have pride of place in my home. Affordability, five out of 10. When first looking at the website for tickets, they seem incredibly affordable, being listed as a day ticket from $34. But it's only when you click through that you realize that this is the children's ticket price and only available on what seems like random days throughout the year. You're much more likely to pay around $50 to $60 per adult for a one day ticket, which is right on the borderline for what I feel is worth it and is just pushed over thanks to the fact that operating days are usually around 12 hours and you're free to come and go as often as you would like during that day. The park is free to enter though, so if someone in your group doesn't want to ride anything, that's fine. They can still watch everyone else on rides and enjoy the general ambiance and entertainment. Annual passes are something you might want to consider if you're a local to the park, but they have seen a dramatic increase since the opening of their nine new rides, increasing around 35% to 200 Australian dollars for the year with the price being the same no matter the height or age of the person it's purchased for. While I can justify that sort of price for myself as I expect I'll go more than four times in a year, it's a hard sell for a family of four to fork out $800 just for entry for a single year. Atmosphere, six out of 10. Luna Park's atmosphere truly shines at night when the sun goes down and the park comes alive with popcorn lighting. The iconic skyline of Luna Park, Sydney perfectly complements the skyline of Sydney Harbour, making this a park that arguably has one of the best backdrops in the world. Replacing a lot of the older, more temporary feeling attractions with permanent offerings has been beneficial in making Luna Park more feel like an amusement park and less like a traveling fair. Some sections though, currently still feel like a construction site with temporary fencing up that throughout the day ends up being pushed all over the place with guests essentially making their own lines. Hopefully over time, these temporary solutions can be replaced with something more permanent that fits the new feel. Services, five out of 10. With most of the theme park world trying to shift away from the cliche food offerings, Luna Park doesn't do that, with all the expected burgers, fries, and hot dogs available to eat. Just be aware that the park is a fully cashless venue, so make sure you bring a card or digital payment with you to buy tickets, merchandise, and food. It's a shame that in the downtime they didn't refurbish the bathrooms though, as they almost feel like a holdover from when the park opened back in the 1930s. They also don't offer any form of skip the line pass, but it's honestly not needed. I've never been to the park outside of special events where wait times for any of the attractions were above 30 minutes. Final thoughts. Luna Park Sydney will always hold a special place in my heart. I love the history of themed entertainment, so to be able to step into a place that's Trying to emulate what it was like back in the early days of amusement parks is 
pretty dang cool. While some of them may have operational issues or not be well presented, all of the nine new rides are fun. And at the end of the day, that's probably the most important thing. As a local, it's still crazy to me that we have a roller coaster as good as Big Dipper right on our doorstep. As I'm used to having to at least go interstate, if not internationally, to ride a really good roller coaster. And the fact it overlooks the iconic Sydney Harbour is simply the icing on the cake. Despite these new rides, the park is still not a substitute for a full theme park like Wonderland Sydney was, but it's really starting to carve a name for itself in the local amusement scene. Luna Park Sydney gets a final score of 51 out of 100, with excellence in merchandise. For review time, I'm Luke. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Review Time. If so, be sure to like and subscribe, and also check out our podcast, Review Time's Theme Park Cast, available on your podcasting platform of choice.